Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. For the Thalemic Order, I'm sibling James Gordon. So, over the next few weeks, we're going to be trying to answer some of the questions that we've gotten on the upcoming Thalemic Initiations. And today, I want to take on a question that we've gotten in a few cases directly, and in a lot of cases by a sort of probing uh, uh, inference, which is, are the initiations queer? And uh, that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, in the sense that you should feel acutely uncomfortable or that someone is going to make you be queer? No. The initiations are about the right of everyone to determine their own gender. Whatever that is, whatever that looks like, no questions asked. No right of anyone else to judge. But we don't support that by saying, okay, so all genders are okay, but we're going to go through initiations that mostly uphold a theoretical cishet norm so that people, by which we mean cishet people, feel comfortable. Look, we know Crowley was queer. We know his mold and model for magical operations, even when it was sword and cup, wasn't necessarily penis and vagina. We know he experimented a lot and identified himself in ways that would absolutely today be described as non-binary. He describes himself in confessions. It is probable that these peculiarities are connected with certain curious anatomical facts. While his masculinity is above the normal, both physiologically and as witnessed in, by his powerful growth of beard, he has certain well-marked feminine characteristics. Not only are his limbs as slight and graceful as a girl's, but his breasts are developed to quite the abnormal degree. There is thus a sort of hermaphroditism in his physical structure, and this is naturally expressed in his mind. But whereas in most similar cases the feminine qualities appear at the expense of manhood, in him they are added to a perfectly normal masculine type. The principal effect has been to enable him to understand the psychology of women, to look at any theory with comprehensive and impartial eyes, and to endow him with maternal instincts on the spiritual planes. So we find two things here. The first is that Crowley was incredibly insecure and obsessed with his masculinity, which is certainly very human and not particularly surprising given the prevailing attitude towards men who are seen as homosexual. Um, I think it's easy to take that comment badly, uh, possibly... Uh, failing to remember that we were in a period where beating people who were seen as homosexual was considered socially normative. Um, but you can find very similar comments by Oscar Wilde, by other homosexual men of the era, trying to defend themselves to a very unsympathetic public. Uh, combined with his other statements, uh, there are not really words to declare it. In fact, Crowley had to make up words to describe his sexuality. But I think we can agree that that is a declaration of gender that is well outside of J.K. Rowling's comfort zone. Uh, certainly, it's a very human note. Secondly, we learn that despite his defensiveness, Crowley was well aware that cognitively he did not conform to gender norms. And as defensive as he was about it, he did not identify entirely as male. Thelema is itself queer. The magical formula of the Lima required going beyond any simple idea of sexuality. In Book 4, Part 3, 5, the formula of EIO, we read Eon of Horus, two sexes in one person. And by that, in the language of the day, means two genders in one person. We also read this constitutes a profound riddle of holiness. Those only understand it who combine in themselves the extremes of moral idea identifying them through transcendental overcoming of the antinomy. They must have gone further yet beyond the fundamental opposition of the sexes. The male must have completed himself and become androgyne, the female and become gynander. This incompleteness imprisons the soul. To think I am not woman but man, or vice versa, is to limit oneself, to set a bar to one's motion. It is the root of the shutting up which culminates in becoming Mary and Violet or a black brother. And by that, in the language of the day, he means a dark adept. Uh, that term could be uh, considered a little uh, questionable today. Equinox 4, that is uh, from Equinox 4, 1, Commentaries on the Holy Books. Uh, that is specifically from his commentary on Liber Cortis Sinti Serpente, uh, Liber 65, uh, which is described as an account of the relations of the aspirant with his holy guardian angel, chapter 5, verse 44. Now, I think that's really interesting because Liber Cortis uh, Sinti Serpente is a document that we're dealing with a lot during the Thelemic holy season. It's one of the principal holy books of Thelema that we, we look at during this season. Um, and I think understanding that that frames his interpretation of it gives a lot of insight into what you're reading. Now, if you're 
comfortably cisgender and heterosexual, that has the potential to sound a lot like you have to change your gender. And that's not the point. The point is intellectually and emotionally to get beyond your own investment in gender norms. And that's something that all of us can do. So, if you're fascinated by the idea that sex relates to magic, and that gender can relate to magic, and are okay with the idea that it can happen in a lot of different ways, and that you need to find the ones that work for you, this is absolutely going to be a comfortable set of initiations. And if you're tolerant, as long as people who do not identify as cis and het understand that they're a minority, not a norm, and that most examples should portray a cis het normality, well, these are probably not the initiations for you. But really, it's not that big a deal. The core of the initiations is about respecting personal identity. And that means nobody's going to challenge what you are. So if you can understand that your freedom pertains to you and respect other people, all of the stars and the company of stars, these initiations are probably for you. For the Thalemic Order, I'm sibling James Gordon. Love is the law. Love under will.